I appreciate the time that you're taking to come and, uh, and see my presentation. I think it's been an exciting day here today. Loads of interesting stuff, so I really hope that you'll find this uh, very useful. Um, just a little bit about uh, what I'm going to cover. We have about 30 minutes, and I'm going to try to do the presentation about 20, so we have time for questions if you're interested. And um, yeah, let's get cracking. So let me talk about what we do in uh, British Telecom and introduce myself a little bit. I'm leading the data governance program for global services. Uh, it's the international arm of BT, and we provide pretty much uh, complicated services and solutions for a lot of our multinational customers. So we pretty much connect everyone everywhere. So I'm leading the transformation for this organization. BT, for a lot of people in UK, it's a very established brand. We, we've been around for no, over, over 150 years. So it's, 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 it's a very rich history and tradition. But when it comes back to data, that results in a huge amount of complexity. And it results in uh, a huge amount of technical debt, legacy issues that we have, uh, buried in services and circuits that we have in the, in the ground for, for many, many years. And when we start looking at how we're going to govern that, how we can do um, assurance, how we can actually transform getting that legacy into something which is more digital, it's a whole challenge. And historically, we've been investing a lot in R&D. And we do that as well when it comes back to data. We have huge amount of programs that allow us to do machine learning, data science, analytics that we now apply to, to drive additional value from what we do. Um, as I've mentioned, I'm responsible for the international part of Global. So we have uh, a huge amount of customers in about over 180 countries. Uh, we operate in a very complex environment, as you can imagine. Um, regulation is slightly different or fundamentally different region by region. We need to cater for all of that when it comes back to governance. We need to look at how we comply with every regulation, how we separate the data in, in the right way to, to, to be able to uh, satisfy our regulatory obligation as well as deliver a safe and secure environment for our customers. So with that complexity, it's actually, um, it's only going to get worse. So what's happening in the industry, the, with the increase in data, with the increase in IoT, with the increase in services, uh, that the customer consume online with the cloud adoption, regulation will only going to get uh, more stricter which, and more fragmented, which is something that for uh, data uh, specialists that operating in international space, they very much need to be aware of. Every single country in the world now is changing the regulation. So they looked at the GDPR, they looked at how the information needs to be consumed, where it needs to be consumed, how it needs to be encrypted, and they put that into regulation around the world is changing left, right, and center, which basically means that if you operate a global organization and if you want to play in this space, you really have to understand how that translates into data operations. What do you need to do in every single country? What is your footprint? Where do you put your data? How do you define your cloud strategy? What are you going to keep on-prem? What are you going to keep on the cloud? And when you put in the cloud, how are you going to keep it in the cloud? And I think starting with the privacy and security is, in our view, the best way. And the reason why I'm saying that is, first of all, all this effort that we have today put in, in, in place to understand this regulation can be digitalized, can be embedded into policy, and can be used to cleanse and enrich the data very, very early days. So instead of looking at a regulatory landscape as a threat, as a showstopper, what actually you can do with it is to take all that knowledge, understanding, process the data in the right way, spend the time to, to, to really, really understand what you can do, how you can do it, enrich the data, use, uh, and, and our strategy is to use a very, very rich metadata store, uh, because 
given the type of com- and complexity of our customers, they have different policies at the customer level, they have different policies at the country level, we have employees and employees that have different rules and different permissions and different uh, consent. We all, all that information needs to be tagged in the data. And I think in our view, the design that we're putting forward is, is, is a metadata repository, which allows us to actually process that regulation and process that. We, we spend a lot of time understanding it. This is now time to now put it into practice and allow it us to, to, to generate scale analytics. There are significant value adds and synergies by if you, if you really look at your privacy program as an enabler for the analytics program. If you look at the governance as an enabler for analytics, because the, the more you spend structuring and understanding what is required and how it's required and where it's required, the easier it is for everyone else in the organization to consume the data and never be bothered again about not doing things right. The value add that we also drive out of that is that allows us to do radical IT simplification, deduplication of data. When we landscape all this data, like everyone else probably in this room, you found every single repository that had this data. You understand which way data is in multiple places. You understood uh, why you keep it. Do you need it in the first place? It allows us to now completely collapse all our IT estate and really keep the necessary stuff. If you really look at how much data do you need to run this business, if you ever ask this question, maybe 2,000 data points? Three? No more than that. And that's pretty much it that is critical. Why do you need hundreds of systems? I don't know, maybe you don't. So it's, it's really, really valuable that if you understand the purpose of the data you have in the system, who is using it, why is using it, then do something about it to reduce that footprint and minimize the risk. And that's exactly what we do today. So we use that landscape to actually move the needle in terms of the value that we generate the transformation. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a story where, where we kind of initially started from, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. Um, we, uh, for most of you, probably the right at the top, like data consumer, data analysis, and data science, there's kind of stages um, and, and personas in how people are actually using the data and how the analytics profession evolved in the, over, over the last few years. I'm not going to insist on that, but initially, you start with the very basic analytics, you start with dashboard, you start with the crunching up some numbers, and don't get me wrong, you can do that without governance. Everyone can do that, but you will plateau. And that's exactly what we are today. We've delivered sustainable transformations, we turn around you know, 200, 300 million a year, but you're not gonna go beyond that. Because at the end of the day, you reach a point where that repeatable task will dry out. It's, it's only so much dashboard you can do. You optimize that point. People are still using it, but it's marginal incremental value that you get out of it. In order to move from a very um, reactive to proactive and a very manual to machine learning, there is something else that needs to happen for you to be able to move that needle. And I think if you look at that, initially, we had capability and skills. People were saying, oh, I can't do all this data. I can't do all the big big data on the servers that I have. So you expect more and more tap into capability. Then you said, I don't have enough data scientists because everyone is looking for data scientists in the industry. I think we solved that problem as well. So what's your excuse next when you're not going to deliver the incremental value that you promised all your shareholders that if you spend so much money on big data, if you spend so much money on data science, how are you going to move the needle? And I think once you fix this, there is a problem with trust. To move the needle from machine proactive, data driven, and let those services and let the machine run and let the decision engine flourish and take the humans away from it and do it fully automatically, you need to trust the data. And I think this is where that question of trust is probably the hardest to beat because this is a human side, not a machine side. This is you cannot really buy. You cannot just go and say, I'll buy your trust because it doesn't work like that. So trusting the data and trusting that you can actually have a stable platform with a stable data stream that you understand, that you understand what's going to happen with the data is the biggest challenge that we have. So 
moving that needle further into the next generation of transformation, the fully autonomous organization that everyone dreams about, it takes that trust. And to do that, you really need to put governance. Without governance and without really explaining the origin of the data and protecting that lineage in the data, people will not trust it. It's literally like fake goods in the market. You go back and you say, well, if this data is, you know, if I buy, I don't know, you wouldn't buy food off the street sometimes just because you don't know where it's coming from, or you wouldn't buy luxury goods if you don't know the origin of that, if it's not trusted, because what if it's fake? And in the current environment of everything being fake, fake data, fake news, fake information is flourishing in most of the organization. Everyone looks at the data, you know, my report is different than yours. How are you going to be able to automate this organization unless you have the trust into the data? So investing into a data governance program, investing into privacy, you know, getting the trust from your customers, getting the trust from your suppliers, getting the trust from your employees into the data that you process is absolutely critical to move forward into that transformation. You'll never be able to automate a lot of the stuff if people do not trust the data. And the difference between the 200 million, 500 million, 1 billion programs sits in uh, the governance part. So <clears throat> what does it mean in terms of how do we do it? So governance, it's for us, we embed a culture where everyone understands that we're talking about our data. It's not, it's not uh, BT's data, it's, it's ours. We run the organization through it, it impacts everyone, impacts your, your, your customer, impacts your supply, impacts your workload, impacts your well-being. Because if you get this wrong, everybody will have to work twice as hard to do anything. So we want to make sure that the availability, the source is trusted, is quality, is consistent, is usable. Those are the attributes that we kind of try to explain to the business. Why is it important? And, and tell the story in a way that they associate every single data point that, is, that matters to us with a story. We tell them that, well, I was giving my colleague an example, each example, end of service life on devices. Why does it matter? Why, why is it important to look after this data point? No, well, security breaches, hacking, threats, you know, you can kill a business if you get it wrong. So telling that story in terms of a, what does it mean to you as a person? What does it mean to the business? Why is it important to govern that and to look after it? It really sticks with people and they start really buying into the governance program because telling people what not to do, is never gonna work unless they really see the value of, of how they're gonna, um, what is gonna be benefiting to them. So we have four pillars that um, I'm, I'm, I'm driving on today. So there is an element of data governance embedment, which is the usual stuff, you know, and you can see our colleagues in, in Colibra, which are our partners in this, to explain exactly the capabilities in terms of lineage. Uh, you can look at the data dictionary, you can look at the, the, the way we manage and define our data, the way you can trace it to the source. It's a, it's a fantastic tool, it works very well with everything, so it's, it's worth looking at it. We then look at our the next analysis platform, which is a, uh, object meta model. We, we do have a lot of data, as I mentioned. We have it globally. We have it on-prem. We have it multi-cloud. Overlay that with uh, a metadata repository that allows you to immediately figure out what data is where. Use some of the data and the metadata rules that you have in Colibra. Apply them to the data as they load these policies. Will enable you to look at hyperscale. It's, it's in my view, to manage that complex set of policies locations, clouds, and customer domain policies, there is no alternative for us at this point than, than this, uh, this solution. And then, this is the easy part, because this is technology you buy, you configure, happy days. The hard part is actually changing the business and changing the processes. It's the root cause analysis, the continuous improvement that, you know, you can have as much governance as you want that tells you how bad you are, unless you have the, the other side of the coin, which is transforming the business and changing the behaviors in the same part of the program is never going to work. So we use spend a lot of time transforming the data, transforming operating model, transforming IT to eliminate those problems and the friction points uh, in order for the governance to be sustainable and really drive the right value. And then of course you've got the maintenance of that architecture which is strengthening the architecture principle, the business architecture between process, data, and, and IT. It's really, really critical to look at that as well. So 
if I look it back, and then I guess a lot of people relate back to this slide as well, you pretty much have a lot of data that sits in many places. It's very different. People talk about it in a in different way. Um, it impacts the, the way people engage with each other. It impacts the process. It impacts the systems. System cannot talk to each other. They, you know, the lack of integration causes more problem. People get more frustrated. So this is a, a normal um, scenario in many organizations. To move the needle further, you really need to start what you're going to start fixing first. And I think a lot of people jump into IT. Some other people jump into data. And they say, I'm going to clean the data. But those, those two things here are consequences of, of something else, are consequences of what I try to, try to achieve. So the big question that you have to ask when you start a transformation program is, is what am I trying to do? What am I doing? Who am I doing it for? What am I trying to solve? And literally, you have two big things that you need to care about. One is, if you operate globally, like us, what are the rules and regulations I have to comply? What do I have to do to get my telecom license in, I don't know, in Venezuela versus Italy versus Germany? Each one of those countries have different rules that put different strains on your data policies and your IT policies. And then, most importantly, is that who are my customers? What do I want to do with them? Do I want a concierge service or do I want a self-service? Do I want a mobile experience or do I want a desk experience? Those type of things dictate your processes and dictate your solutions and ultimately your business strategy drive your data strategy. So you really have to start understanding where you want to be. If you understand where you want to be, data and systems will be the easy part because you can change the data, we can go back and repair it or generate new. Most of this stuff will get aged by tomorrow, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but getting it right for the future is probably what it is. So quality, cleansing, you're doing it to protect the future, not to correct the past. If you're doing it retrospectively, yes, you'll get some money out of it. But in reality, you're not necessarily going to change the, the dial and move the business forward. And then from there on, you decide where your people are, what systems do you need, what data do you need to connect. And pretty much from there on, you move to a single set of data, a data hub, a nucleus that will actually support all your IT application architecture. It will support your integration layer. It will support a ridiculous amount of over-the-top applications that are existing today. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to stop the business from not buying software. No, just, I mean, just spin off whatever software you want, plugs in, metadata clicks in, you can actually enable that. All you have to do is secure it, in the metadata repository, you've got access permissions, application-based permission, role permission, off you go. So you don't really want to slow down the business, and especially in the digital eco ecosystem today. You want to be able to onboard and offboard suppliers as quickly as possible, but get hold of the data and have it in your, in your, in your place. And that will improve your experience. Uh, it will increase customer adoption and will definitely open up an ecosystem of new partners and suppliers. So it's, it's really helping us to scale and move in our transformation model because our market and our our industry is very much challenged you look at over the top you look at amazon we look at google they connect warehouses around the world so our core business which is transport around the world is being is being affected we need to react and we need to be agile as effective as as our bigger player to be able to stay relevant for our customers and that's what governance helps us to do so if i look at some key points, and I'm happy to open up the floor for questions. I think we have enough time. The most important thing is to really think about your purpose. Why do you, what governance do you want to do? What, what is important for the business? And build a governance program that protect that. As I said, most of the businesses, they wouldn't need more than a few thousand, you know, one, two thousand key data points. Find those key data points, build a governance program around the connecting points, what, what matters to the customers, what matters to the regulators, fix the basics and, and really build that as soon as possible. Once you have that in place, data clicks in place, your machine learning, AI models will scale up. You can let the robots do the rest of the tasks. The data stabilizes itself, so it's, very quite, it's quite powerful. You then enable your analytics, you drive high financial returns. That is, in, it kind of pays for everything. Because the more analytics you enable for it in a safer way, you get protected, you don't have to worry about regulatory penalties, breaches or anything like that, because it's a safe environment for the analysts to explore and because and, and, everything to do with governance is taken care of. So 
unlock that potential, it unlocks the hundreds of millions of transformation opportunities that you're going to have in the organization and unlocks the automation. You look into it and listen, the faster you do it, the faster you turn around, the optimal you are unlocks your competitive advantage. Because people will come to you, you know, if you can spin off solutions for them very quickly, if you can deliver the right experience, if they have the right insight in their data and you have a single pane of glass with everyone, supplier, customers, you know, that's, that's, that's what people expect. You don't have to explain yourself a hundred times. So it's, it's helping you with that experience layer. And digital transformation it needs to be on everyone's agenda. And governance is pretty much at the heart of it because none of that is actually possible in reality without governed data. So making sure that you have a foundation program in place to unlock the potential of digital transformation is absolutely a must for most organizations. And continuous improvement, which doesn't matter how you do it first time, as long as you constantly improve, you know, go in an agile mindset, keep delivering, keep improving, come back again, do it again if it doesn't work, you know, try fast, fail fast if, you, if it's happening. Don't be constrained by long, long, long leak time because you don't have much time to really start embedding this governance. You really have to do it in an agile fashion. Start big, you know, small chunks, end-to-end -end journey, look at the whole value chain, and then govern what's relevant out of it, and then move to the next one. So it's really important to, to think about the speed, the agility, the construct of the program, and how not just going to throw, you know, throw technology and data quality at it, but how is it going to change the business? Because if you don't change the business, you're going to run very quickly out of money of keep cleaning up and mopping up. It's, it's, you need to have the right balance. So that's where I will stop. Um, question, thoughts? Anyone wants to challenge? <laughs>